vote to leave Europe and we can spend an extra 350 million on the NHS. Remember that? Well, if you did, you're wrong. The actual slogan on that bus was, we spend on the EU 350 million a week. Let's fund the NHS instead. Granted, it's an implied consideration, but not an explicit promise. Yet, who cares about implied or explicit provision? Do we actually take what our politicians say as gospel in the first place? Certainly, some priggish types do, but the vast majority of us don't. We tend to have lives and not worry too much about the specifics. It's the sentiment that counts, and basically, the winning side on the Brexit argument was we spend too much on European stuff. They won. For some, that hurts, but hey, if you believe in democracy, that's about it. Of course, campaigners are like professional footballers. They are generally liars and cheats, but that's the game, isn't it? Do we genuinely think when an attacking player crashes over in the opposition penalty box, he was 100% fouled? Likewise, we don't necessarily expect our campaigners or politicians to be 100% honest. The proof is in the pudding, is it not? Another load of balderdash and drivel was the suggestion that if we voted to leave Europe, all the big banks would leave London. Well, that's a little bit true, isn't it? I can tell you that since Brexit, here in Birmingham, we have absorbed at least 6,000 Londoners last year alone. Many from banking and financial services. That's building on thousands who had already arrived. Goldman Sachs, as we know, are opening up in Birmingham soon. HSBC announced another thousand souls moving to Birmingham. Deutsche Bank is committed to further expansion into our city. So, arguably, the London argument is true, but they, of course, meant Frankfurt, Hong Kong and not Brum. Is that the equivalent of a deliberate dive in the penalty area? But it's not just these wonderful big bank household names we're moving in. Big service sector companies are also on the move to Brum. BT, a couple of years ago, consolidated its provision in the city. No matter what any other location can claim, they are never at the centre of the nation. Birmingham is. PwC, Barclay, KPMG, all have expanded their provision within Birmingham. They know the value of our city with its highly skilled, immensely talented work pool, modest price housing and overall fabo lifestyle. Birmingham is truly a great city with an immense future. So maybe we didn't or won't be getting 350 million extra pumped into the NHS. But then again, our talent pool isn't leaving the UK either. We are consolidating that and growing it in different locations. For the record, I was neither a Remainer or a Brexiteer. I was firm in the didn't care camp. I never thought for a moment it would make any difference to my life or that of the majority of us all. For is it not the case that most of us are all part of the infantry, be it at differing ranks? Irrespective of my Brexit position, I know Birmingham is doing very well indeed. Plus, it has loads more mileage in it. A gentle PS for our sensitive work types. I spoke of male football as being drama queens, the deliberate exclusion of female proponents of the beautiful game. Could I make the point that women footballers are not so inclined to roll over a near miss as their male counterparts are. It's coming in their game, but not at the moment.